Welcome back. So, as you know, uh, SK is broadcasting from River Lee, and the moment that uh, they're ready for us, we will cross in to the broadcast. It's uh, illegal miners basically risking their lives and health searching for minerals in disused mines in the River Lee area. This has, of course, put the risk uh, of the residents, their lives at risk, who have seen a rise in crime and unstable roads as well. So, um, let's cross over to her. I think Sakina is ready at the moment, so let's go to them now. Uh, Sakina, I, I, it, I, you know, the situation there is a, there's a bit scary to watch, I have to tell you, especially as we cross to you saying that people are running towards or running around with pangas. But, you know, I, I just hope that you're all safe there. But perhaps just give us another understanding of, of, of the kind of feeling that you have there. And... Thank you so much, Leanne. Welcome back to River Lee. And as I said earlier, it is very tense out here and there are so many guns around us, quite apart from the guns uh, that have been waging the turf war. And I spoke earlier about the tactical response team. They are further down. And then there's quite a huge police contingent around us right now. But let me tell you what's happening. You can actually notice the clandestine movement that's taking place here. There's a guy across the road and I've been watching him and he's been signaling to the guys in the squatter camp. There's a group of men that have already gathered on the other side and then they disperse and there's another group and you can see that there's quite a bit of activity and quite a bit of um, uh, communication that is going on. Messages being sent in to the Zamimpilo squatter camp because obviously the presence of the police has alerted people that something is perhaps about to happen here. So very tense it is this morning. I told you earlier that community members are really scared and we are going to speak to someone now whom we're not going to put on camera because she is scared, she fears for her life and she has asked not to be shown. We're not going to give you her name but she's going to tell us from her perspective as someone who lives quite close to the squatter camp what her daily existence is like. Thank you so much for speaking to us and for your bravery for coming forward. So. What is your day-to-day -day life like here in um, uh, its horseshoe, uh, Rivoli Extension 13, and of course as, as Extension 2, and quite, uh, it's right across from the Zamimpilo squatter camp. So talk to us about what your daily life is like. Sakina, your daily life is fear. You stay in your house locked up the whole day. Kids get picked up to go to, kids get picked up to go to school, they get dropped off, they don't go out. By five o'clock, we're all inside. We don't go nowhere. That's how fearful we are. So you were telling me earlier about, you know, the sort of movement that happens. And you said around the 25th, there's a particular movement that happens in this area. If you'd just like to share that with the rest of the viewers. Um, what I said, because I used to work with CPF. We used to patrol the area. And from the 25th, of every month, it, the shooting gets worse. They're shooting during the month, but coming month in, it gets worse. That is why Saturday night it was like that. Mr. Becky Taylor told us he's going to send out um, TRTs. If he send them out, he's going to keep them here for two weeks, they're going to disappear. The 1st of September, we'll be out in the street again, because definitely sure if they can come month in. We've been telling the cops this for long. Month end is just worse. My window was shattered on Saturday, 20 past 6. So this thing started from half past 5. Sakina people said it was half an hour. It was up until 10 to 8. 10 to 8, 8 o'clock it was quiet. 12 o'clock at night they were shooting again. 2 o'clock in the morning they were shooting at the bottom um, by Highgate side. They were shooting there again. So the shooting don't stop. It just gets, it's just worse when it's manned in. And as far as the community goes, because I understand you have curfews, self-imposed in certain instances, but I understand if you go into Zamimpilo, they are actually told that they need to stop moving around. And we saw that coming in this morning. It was quiet and we were told that is because people will not come out until there is at least some natural light. Sakina, so, with Zamimpilo, I'm not sure. I don't know what's happening in Zamampilo, but what I can tell you is if Zamampilo is not removed, this is never going to stop. And people will say to us that we, they're not, they're not 
Zamampilo is not doing anything. Zamampilo is the cause of this. If there was no Zamampilo, there wasn't going to be mining to, uh, uh, Basutus and Zamam Zamas fighting each other. They run in there, they run into the community. We as a community are really not safe. And as far as the children are concerned, because I understand that's a particular problem as well. No, the kids don't walk around, but if you come into Osho, so can I come into Osho, then you'll see who's walking around there. Zama Zamas, Zaman Pillow people, they are walking the streets of Osho like they live in Osho. The people of Osho stay in the house like they're in prison. We cannot walk around. Well, thank you so much for speaking to us and giving us that perspective. And of course, we'll put it to the authorities just to try and get a sense of, you know, uh, what they know and what they are doing about what's happening here. So, as I say, uh, we can see, you know, just looking around, the lookouts pointing at the police right now. I've been watching these guys and it is clear that they are relaying the messages about what's going on here in the street and uh, with the police to others who have gathered inside uh, the um, uh, squatter camp here at Zamimpilo. Well, I'm joined now by uh, the MMC for safety. That's a mayoral uh, committee member for safety in Johannesburg, uh, Dr. Um, the, uh, Dr. Mkini Chwaku. Uh, Dr. Chwaku, thanks so much for your time and uh, welcome to Morning Live. So. You've heard the community members, yes. you've heard their concerns, yes. but I would imagine you know about this. Yeah. Yes, uh, no, good morning to you too. Yes, um, if you just lift the mic, please. Okay, yes, yes, we, we are aware of it. Um, we did the operations in Amatole. Amatole has got the same scenario what is happening here. But Sakina, let me raise um, Indo that, that we've been experiencing because remember we are the uh, JMPD, which is, um, you know, we're actually under subs in a way. We actually operate with subs. So every time when we have to do Lama operations of this nature, um, you'll find that um, we will do a parade and then subs, they will not come in. Um, so we did, we've got the undercover unit, as you can see that you said there are guns. We've got an undercover unit of which we've been de de deploying in, in all these other areas. So, um, yes, we're aware of this area. Even our undercover unit was here, you know, like uh, uh, yesterday. We saw a lot of holes that are here. And then what we found out with the undercover unit was that we've got a turf war. It's a war between, you know, it's a territorial war that, that is actually happening. Guys coming from outside, um, um, and they will hit the guys which are inside, and then they will actually leave. And then also what the, the, the people they must understand is that there is a supply, it's a chain. Um, it's a business, it's a big business. And they call it a line. Mm. You have to buy a line for plus minus 200,000. And then you have to wait. So that 200,000 pays the Zamazama. When he has to go down, he pays for your tools. He pays your food underground. And then when you come out, you're one with the dust, they call it that dust, and, and the Penduga. So what you're seeing here is a Penduga area where the that dust is converted into gold. So every Thursdays and Fridays, you've got cars lining up, collecting the, that gold and go and, and, and sell it into the, 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 in, 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 into the, the, the market. So I'm glad that you're on top of the yeah. situation in yeah. terms of what is happening here yeah. at MMC. Yeah. So what have the authorities done about that? When those yeah. cars line up here, yeah. What have you done about it? What have you done about this Penduga area? Have you gone in? Have you arrested these people? Because this is the community's crime. Yes, yes Sakina, we've, we've done what is called for now a, it's called a, a disruptive operation. So we, we, we go in with the like, we disrupt them in terms of taking the, the, these Pendugas, we take all the, the, the equipment and all of that, and some of the holes of which they are coming out. We've actually been putting concrete on them and, and, and all those kind of things. But you know, this is a very delicate operation, né? and I've been actually asking you correct in that we want to extend our hand to say, steps they must actually help us because it, this must be an intelligent driven operation mm. because what happens is that these guys as you have seen that they are very organized when it's like when we plan this operation there and then we are going in by the time we get in they're, they're gone 
and some of them they chill go under, uh, underneath. But what we found, we found all the tools, we found all the the stuff, and then we saw the holes, and then we actually be able to, you know, to, to actually, you know, to be to actually, you know, to seal those uh, uh, holes mm. on that. The reality yeah. is, MMC. Yeah. We are here because there's been an incident over the weekend yeah. that was captured fortunately yeah. for the community yeah. and this has obviously uh, led to a lot of uh, outcry about yes. what is happening in this area mm. you are aware of it your intelligence mm. has told you exactly how the operation unfolds mm. in this area so why hasn't the community been secured why aren't they provided safety so that they can go about their daily lives in a normal manner we have as a city there's an establishment of the multi uh, you know, the disciplinary uh, uh, task team under Floyd Brink. Um, that actually consists now, um, it's actually SEPs, because SEPs, they must come on board, because um, there is actually their competency anyway. So it's a multiple it's SEPs, it's JMPD, it's the Department of Minerals. Uh, and all the other, you know, the other guys, GRA and all of that. So, so we've been working on that, and but it's not actually not been enough. You correct, but um, uh, there's been like lots of effort to do disruptive o o operation with the actually here. Yeah. But that but means your disruptive that, operations uh, are failing, because the community feels as though they are getting you know, worse. Uh, the situation is actually worsening every every month, every day, as they say. They can't walk the streets because the Zamazamas own the streets. So when the Zamazamas come around, they have to retreat. They have to make sure that they are indoors, oh, you know, at a certain time, because after that, the Zamazamas are the ones who own this territory. So uh, the, the community has been failed by government here. Look, on, on, on our side, as the gym, uh, you know, the gym, uh, PD, our operations are kind of, we've actually done them quite a lot. We've uh, sent all the, the crew, the, you know, the, the crews inside, you can see Pops here, they've been doing But they only stuff. came but now. They, no, no, they were here. No, 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 they no, were no. not here. No, no. They were not no, no. here, MMC. No, no, they, they were here. They were not so, here, MMC. So, Sakina, let me tell you. Yes. Like, um, that's why the lady that you actually saw here, mm -hmm. I know them very well. Mm. Because we actually been patrolling quite a lot here. The lady, uh, uh, you know, Abu Penis in this area. We've been patrolling and then we've been doing this under, undercover work. That's why I'm telling you that, of course, it's not enough. Because what happens is that we have to work all of us, the, the SEPs and the, 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 you know, the, the JMPD. So is the but, community but lying, the MMC? Are they lying when no, they look, say uh, look, there was no police visibility? Look. When we got here earlier on, we met one vehicle. But as we were here, the vehicle started coming in. No, we we, we were to remember by the time when you're coming in, that is a change of, of, of the of the of the shift, because the shift they go from six to, to six. But in terms of actually increasing the police visibility in the area, we have done that many times. I mean, this is not the the, the, the only area that we would do that. Uh, you've got the areas like you know, the floor of, you've got the Mat Matoleville and all of that. Mm. So um, I think that when you guys came, you came at time that they were actually you know they, they were changing the, the shift. But when you came in, I think there were two about it, you know the the old you know. Mm -hmm. We found the, 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 one, the but what was your deployment yeah. here yesterday? Sorry? In, what was your deployment in terms of numbers here yesterday? Uh, yesterday we've got the undercover unit, we got the, the pops. You had plus man, I think about uh, about 10, 10 cars or so. But some of the guys, they were actually doing the work in terms of undercover. You see this thing, that's what I've been saying to, to guys every time. It's not about police visibility. You must have what you call an intelligent driven operation. Yes. You, you can't have, you can't have, because what happens is that the guys, man, Mm. Because if you want to actually, if you want to catch them, you need to have an intelligence coming in and then nab them in. But how yeah, long what? do you need? Yeah. Because this has been going on yeah. for 10 years. How long do you need to clamp down on the situation? No, at this point in time, ne, um, we've actually taken upon ourselves to say that um, let us, let us as the city now, um, we're not going to be depending in terms of the SEP on anything. So we actually established now this task team, which is going to be starting to work from coming to this week. For the next, you know, uh, months or so, we're going to be here. We're going to be dealing with this area. They're not, they're actually many of them. Yes. We're looking at looking at about 12 of them. Yeah, well, so, 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 so that, yeah. that's all fine, MMC. Yeah. You can be here for a month. You can yeah. be here for 10 months. Mm. But for as long as you're not dealing with the actual mm. problem, your presence means absolutely you nothing. Know, another thing that I've been saying, Sakina, is that one of the things that we're saying that we we want to propose at some point. Remember saying that we need to legalize 
in you know, this small scale uh, uh, mining. Mm. It's one of the things that we said DM, DME must actually, you know, must actually okay. come into, into part, into part You're as right. well. You're right. There yes. are others who also need to be held accountable here for exactly. the situation. Yes. But I'm going to come back to you later okay, in the no broadcast problem. because yeah. I think what we need to do, we're going to go across to Zamin Pilo. Yes, because... And, I, and, and we're going to see what's yeah, going on in I there. I want to show you what we, okay. what we have been actually doing because we've been working. Perfect. Yeah, well, yeah we've been working. Dr. Yeah. Shaku is, yes. of course, the MMC for yeah. safety in the city of Johannesburg. We're going to take a quick break and then we're going to come back. We'll also speak to the political representatives, elected representatives in this area as we bring you what's happening here in Rivoli. And of course, uh, we'll tell you what's happening in Zamimpilo where we're being watched. I can tell you that, but it's back to studio.